Hello everybody and welcome back to the Mega Modded series with the Dead God Plus and all that. And we are jumping in again. I have re-enabled our difficulty mods again. I do apologize for the last episodes. But what I've done is, as per your guys' suggestion, do remember there's a backlog. So I didn't see these suggestions for a little bit of time. But as per your guys' suggestions, also a tinted gerb, an interesting one. I have uh, tweaked the boss armor to be a lot less aggressive. It's now, I basically halved the amount of boss armor that's added to every single boss. So now it shouldn't be quite as difficult to kill some of these end bosses. I still do want to keep the mod on because I do enjoy the game being a bit harder. But you guys were right, it was a little bit egregious. Tainted Job is not unlocked. Okay, guess we're playing Job then. <laughs> Fair enough. We're playing Job. I didn't actually know that there was a requirement to unlock Tainted Job, but there you go, there is. So maybe we'll try and unlock Tainted Job today. Um, we got to do our trinket drop and all that stuff to get a cracked key. Unless we get one from another method, then we don't have to do all that. I'd kind of hope that we do. But anyways, let's just jump in. I'm just going to, like, destroy the boss right now. Also, I've now got the normal version of the Book of Despair that doesn't give me, um... It doesn't give me a decaying tears bonus. Instead, it just gives me a regular tears bonus. People were asking why that is. Like, why I had the um, different version of the Book of Despair. That's actually because of one of the unlocks that Jerb has. For those of you that don't know, Jerb has a lot of unlocks. And some of them are, like, bonuses and extras. And I think that's one of the bonuses or one of the extras. So, we're not going to have that as normal. But, anyways, I'm still pretty happy to play Jerb nonetheless. He's a pretty fun character. Starting with this higher tier rate is always fun. We've already got two items that change up the way our eyes look. That's kind of funky. But for today's question of the day, in fact, in fact, in fact, this is a great time to refer back to one of my other videos. Because I asked you guys to leave me questions of the day. So let me pick one out. Let me pick one out. And then I can even actually ask the people, I can uh, reference the people in, that left the uh, question of the day, if I can find it. Okay, what is your favorite board game? And this was by Thug Love Do Silence. Thank you for the question of the day. Again, if you want to leave extra questions of the day for me to ask, then please do let me know. For me, favorite board game is kind of a difficult one because it's like, I don't play board games that much, or at least I haven't in a while. I, I do have um, the Four Souls card game, which is kind of a board game. It's more of a card game than a board game, but I kind of still count it as the same thing. I own a board for it, um, and it's the last one that I played sort of semi-recently, so I'd, I'd have to say that that's probably up there for me. Um, I do also like to play D&D, which I also realize is not a board game, but it's kind of the closest thing I've got to an answer. Um, and yeah, I've got to say, like, I never, I know a lot of, uh, a lot of families, I won't say a lot of families, but I know that some families have, like, board game nights. I don't know if it's, like, a specifically American thing, but you always see it on, like, American TV and stuff. They have, like, these board game nights and stuff. My my family never did anything like that. Um, we played Monopoly every now and again, but that was just that, that's just like aggro. <laughs> but anyone that's played Monopoly with their family, that's a way to break trust. Um, I'm just gonna go regular path this time. I'm gonna try and go to the beast here and try and unlock in a job. Um, yeah. Um, for any of you that have played uh, Monopoly with your family, yeah, it's it's pretty. Ooh, we got speed run. Okay. Isn't speedrun? I can't remember. Speedrun might be the really busted one. I know there's one of these items. I can't remember if it's the, um, ooh, that was a bad hit. I can't remember if it's the speedrun item or the little ghost one from Deliverance, but one of these items that requires you to go fast, I remember is like busted good. Excuse me? Oh, uh, there you go. I remember one of them's like really, 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 really strong. I can't remember if it's this one or not. I'm going to take a bet and say it is this one, because this one's from Ipecac. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. So, actually, turns out I don't think it's working. I don't know why, but my Ipecac seems to be having some serious issues right now. Um, so, normally what would happen is a timer would appear in the top left and let us know how long we have to beat the room. That's just straight up not showing up anymore. Um, I will contact the developers about that, because Ipecac just generally has just been having a lot of items that don't work recently, and I don't know why, but if, if we take a look at the encyclopedia here, um, I, I am on the latest update as well. 
Finish a rune under 12 seconds um, to double your reward. Spawn a coin if no reward would. So as you can see here, like let, let's let's just, let's just do another room and, and test that theory. So we didn't get double trinkets there. We didn't get double keys there. So it's definitely not working. That room was finished very rapidly. So yeah, I think I think we've got a bit of an unfortunate situation here where speedrun isn't working correctly. Uh, I don't know if that's some incompatibility on my side of things or some issue with Ipecac itself. Um, I don't know. I apologize. But unfortunately, when you have a large mod pack, things like this are gonna happen. Um, it is more than likely that it's a compatibility issue with something that I've done, some, some mod that I've got. Otherwise, the developers would probably already know about it, I would reckon. Um, this is a slightly annoying room, this, because the enemies just keep appearing in a location where I can't actually hit them. I also ran right into that guy. Okay. Steven, how are you? Oh, wait, no, now, now, we have a, now we have a timer on the left look. Wait, what? I thought it was on the right. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was there the whole time. But I definitely have a timer this time. And for some reason, it's ridiculously high on bosses. Like, redonkulously high. Also, this, this boss fight might take a little bit of time here. Because we've got relatively low damage. And, like, we do... Oh, to be fair, we have Mum's um, Contact, which is going to help a lot. But we have low damage and high fire, which is going to mean this guy's an absolute pain. But... That's going to really save us. Freeze the boy. Freeze the little baby thing. I think there's a limit to how often we can freeze him. But yeah, I do I do have to say... Oh, oh. Okay. Now that's just busted. <laughs> okay. So that's not what I was expecting. Um, right. So l let, me just, let me just check this out. Maybe I got it wrong. Did I get it all wrong? Works on bosses. So it doesn't work in regular runes, but it does work on bosses for some reason. I got two little Stevens, which just seems quite overpowered, um, but I will take it. Well, I mean, I mean, two little Stevens itself, in itself, obviously isn't overpowered. But being able to get double, um, double items and having 300 seconds to kill my boss, maybe, maybe a little on the generous side. Where did you come from? I say, if we get like a damage up or like a squeezy or something, that's going to be crazy. I don't actually know if I want metronome. I actually do quite like metronome as an item, but I would have to trade my um, my spacebar for it. And I have to admit, I'm not really up for that right now. But yeah, having double little Steven with the low damage we currently have is actually fantastic. I'm just going to proc it once and see what happens. We got an Alexa baby. What a cutie. He didn't do anything for us though. Alexa, you've let me down. God damn you, Tyler. How could you do this to me? Don't worry. I've been sending, um... I've been sending Tyler lots of, um, cursed images recently. We we have a... Me, BD1P, and Alexa have, like, a little Discord chat where we just, like, kind of mess around and, and meme and stuff. Um, and, um... I, I sent him a, a picture that I... For some reason I made when... I don't know when I made it, but it's it's the most cursed image of the turtle melon that exists on the planet Earth. Um, when... One time when... I think it was when me and Skull, my artist, were getting ready for repentance. When we were, like, rearing up for, um... Making the thumbnails and stuff. We were, like, prototyping the, the pose that the character would be in. And for some reason, at one point, obviously, did not end up being the finished product. And I'm glad. Okay, so it's working now. Maybe I was just completely wrong. Um, Maybe it was working the whole time and I'm just dumb. There's a very strong possibility of that, too. Um, But, yeah, I remember when we were working on it, I had this cursed idea to put the turtle melon in, like, the little horn pose. But because I can't draw... Ooh, as an eternal champion. What I ended up doing is just making a like a sketchup of Little Horn turned into the turtle melon. Um, but with with like he doesn't have a shell or anything, he's just recalled. Honestly, let me see if I can just one second add I'm gonna add a, an image source to the to the video so you guys can see this, because it is truly, truly cursed. Um it's it's genuinely awful, and you you will you will absolutely despise yourself having seen it. Look at this bitch. It's the naked turtle melon. He's so cursed. <laughs> turtle melon, but without the shell. He's the most cursed little fella. Do you know what? Just for this episode, he can stay right there. For the whole damn thing. Enjoy. 
he can just chill there, being his self, being his little old self, doing his own thing, disturbing the children. I think we got a Dormimic just up there. Um, yeah, we do. Boom, bow. Uh, we got a smelter. I'm unfortunately not really into a smelter right now because with the, the trinket that we've got, it's not really worth spending a soul hat on. We also can't afford it, so it doesn't matter anyways. Um, yeah, he's a he's a cursed little dude. I I don't know why I made it. Like I kind of I made it as like a mock up for like here's what it could look like, but obviously not terrible because I can't draw. Um, so I just made like a basic recolor. Um, but then like I didn't add the shell for some weird reason. Oh, that's a lot of money. A lot of money. Yeah, I didn't have the shell for some weird reason, and it just ended up being incredibly cursed. I apologize for all of your eyes. Okay, this could be a genuinely very good room if we get a payout early enough here. Just leave me with a little bit of money. Ooh, okay. So, he did actually pay out with a secret room item, which is a bit weird. Unless they could maybe pay out with Evil Charm anyways. But now we can try and re-roll this into something a little bit better. Sackhead's pretty good, but not quite good enough. Rock bottom is where it's at. Rock bottom with the book for the permanent 1.75 fire. This is the second time I've had this situation as Job now. Yes, baby. An early rock bottom is also just very good anyways. I'm happy. I'm happy. Rock bottom was a, a good picker. Most definitely. So let's just look out for like cards and items and pills and all that sort of stuff that we can raise our stats with. But yeah, rooms like that are, are, are quite strong. They, To be fair, they are quite rare. I, I won't complain because they, they, they don't appear that often. But there is a few of them in modding that are obviously quite strong. Yeah, why the hell do we have 280 seconds to kill a boss? That's just redonkulous. That's just redonkulous. We are killing him pretty fast, though. That's nice. I was hoping he'd fly that ball into the fire, but he missed it. Okay, we should be able to finish him off here. And we get double item rewards here. Yeah. So, I, that's that's crazy. Lots of shot speed, and we get damage for shot speed, so that's really nice. Um, we're going to keep going. We do, we do have a trinket to drop if we need. Just drop it in one of our boss rooms. In fact, I should have just done it in that one there, so I didn't forget. And we need to not forget to go Beast as well. I, I am interested to fight Beast, though, because both Dogma, the actual horseman, and... Oh, my God. Both Dogma the Horseman and the Beast do have increased boss armor. I have tweaked the values, like I said, so it's not insane. It used to be kind of insane. Um, unfortunately, my book's pretty useless now, so I can actually... Actually, it's kind of a good thing that it's useless now, because now I can just get rid of it whenever I feel like it. Um, do you have a potential chance for a sack room there? Ooh, we have the Eternal Enemy uh, Champion Room. I always forget about those. So we'll take a little look in here. I think this is just a regular old boss trap room that can spawn angel deals, and yeah, I'll take it. Oh, we got conjoined? Okay, wow. I might end up getting hit in here. I'd rather not, but honestly, this is not a great fight for us. Um, also, conjoined was fine because it didn't lower our stats at all, which is obviously unexpected normally, but for us, the rock bottom easters that we are. Okay, there you go. I don't know why I used it again, but I just keep using it for some reason. Okay, Frail is a little, little bit difficult here. Frail's such a cool boss. Really interesting design. Makes him look like an absolute pushover when you first fight him, and then you're like, but wait, there's more. Oh, God. Yeah, I knew I was getting hit there. Goodbye, Angel Deal. It's been nice. I mean, to be fair, we did just get an Angel item here, so I won't complain too much. But yeah, I do like to have Conjoined here. That's real good with Conjoint too, especially on a, a water-based floor too. Got some interesting stuff going on here. Little bit concerned about my current HP. Um, hopefully, Cursed Turtle Melon hasn't cursed this run forever. Look at that, that was beautiful. He hasn't cursed this run forever, but almost definitely he has. Oh baby, this could be the Sac Room player that we need. I don't know why Sac Room play. It sounds like Sacre Bleu. I was like... <laughs> The Sacrum Blair. Yes, baby. This is beautiful.
There's that angel deal. And we got the mind for it too. Pretty happy with the mind. And we got Immaculate Heart Baby. Oh, yes. Okay, I think everything else in here is pretty whatever. Um, we didn't have any blood banks, did we? I don't think. But this is... This has become a pretty interesting room we got here. Especially Immaculate Heart. Immaculate Heart is pretty top tier for us. We do have a better trinket there that I'd kind of like to, to grab. Oh, my lord. The amount of electricity. We got the little ghosty as well that's firing electricity too. And it's just crazy. Might as well pop in here because we got so many red hearts. We got Guppy's soul as well. Very nice. Yeah, we can just go back and grab a red heart over here. Grab myself a little nug. We should honestly um, do another another play, actually. I'm just thinking about it now. If we play the sack room a little more, we could get some soul hearts out of this. Um, so we, we go for that. Didn't mean to pick that up, but there you go. 100% chance of Uriel. Don't care about fighting you. And then... Do you know what? We got the money. Either way, I was going to be pretty happy, but I'd rather I had the soul hearts. But now we've got enough money to do whatever the hell we want. Let's carry on our wayward son. Um, hmm. Let's check our shop first, but I'm going to come back to that arcade because we did have two fortune telling machines, which I'm kind of interested in. But yeah, on a water based floor, we don't even have to aim. It's beautiful. We just shoot. Everything dies. I'll take a pill. Okay, that was uh, interesting. I will take this. I will take this. The coupon, it's it's okay. And obviously, I, I've realised I don't need my uh, my active. But I'd honestly rather spend my money on the fortune telling machines to get a better trinket and leave this one in the boss room. Or, um, in fact, yeah, whatever, whatever. Um, or I'd also like to just get some soul hearts too. So either or is fine by me. Take your medicine, stay asleep, use bombs wisely. Ah, I can't read it. Ah, too many fortunes. Hey, devil's pretty good for us here. Unfortunately, that was a lot of waste, but we did get a devil card. And another devil card, which increased our damage further. That's permanent damage for us now. Very nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'd rather... I know I didn't really get tons out of that. But I, I don't know. To be fair, I did get a pretty sizable damage upgrade. I got like a 3 point something damage up, right? I was at like 2.7 damage before. Okay, oh. Jacob's Ladder with tier effects is so good. So, like, I don't know if you can tell, but Mum's Contact procs to every enemy that the Chain Lightning hits. So, it's just procking all the time. So many enemies are getting destroyed by it. Okay, this boss we only have 200 seconds for. Wow. I don't know if we'll make it. I mean, not great, but I suppose extra range and extra luck isn't bad. Okay, let's let's leave this trinket here. Just so I don't forget about it. Yeah, I think we're stomping here. I think we're stomping. But yes, D I think I've, I've spoken a little bit before about D&D. &D. Um, I, I know that we get new people on the channel all the time. In fact, there's been a lot of new people recently. So a huge thank you to all of you that have been big supporters of the channel recently. It's uh, It's been awesome seeing all of you guys be so awesome. Oh, we got a double trinket drop there. So we might as well pop this. Doesn't matter, we can't get any damage out of that. So let's just take Book of Shadows now. Um... Yeah, um, thank you all for just the, the support Right, recent, uh, recently has been absolutely crazy, so big thank you to everyone for that. Uh, but what I was going to say is I have spoken about D&D um, &D before, but someone recently asked if I'd ever played it, so they haven't heard my D&D &D story. So we got the Eternal Champion here, we got him. Um, so I just want to kind of go over some of my D&D &D experiences again. I apologize for those of you that have heard it before, but I still think, I still think these stories are interesting nonetheless. Basically, I played d and I've only played D&D properly, like properly, properly once. Um, essentially, my old flatmate, uh, the person that I used to live with, um, her boy we lived with um, her and, his and her boyfriend. And her boyfriend is a fantastic writer and dungeon master. Like, he he's the sort of person that, for one, 
can not only be a great DM, but he, he makes his own story, you know, his own world. He's not using any boilerplate stuff. Obviously, he still uses, like, the um, first edition manuals and stuff for, like, monsters and stuff. Um, and, like, guidance on stats, things like that. But this is crazy. With Rebirth, this is just annoying. Um, oh, my God. Um, yeah, so he still uses all that, but, like, outside of that, he, like, created his own world, all his, right, wrote all his like, own NPCs and everything, and created this truly fantastic world. It was kind of like a desert sort of planet, or, uh, like, city, should I say? It's not really planet, but um, kind of like a desert city that we were in, um, and it was, it was really intriguing. It was very in-depth, and essentially, we kind of had, we, we, we sort of started off in this uh, little sort of town, and we were trying to find, um, I, can't, I can't remember what it was called now. It was it was called something anomalies. It was like a word that meant that, that means time. It, we, we were trying, we were looking into time anomalies. Um, and like I said, this wasn't a futuristic world at all. So obviously that was like quite strange for where we were. Um, and obviously it's still a world in D and D, so magic is still involved, and it's still plausible within the world, but it was still like, god damn, this is crazy, um, was still like a little bit sort of weird, and we ended up kind of like completely abandoning that quest, so he, he set up this quest, and obviously with D&D, your players are quite often going to subvert your expectations um, and do other things, and we were getting to it, unfortunately, I will say, the, the game abruptly came to an end, our D&D session, because unfortunately, um, the two, the, the the couple we were living with broke up, um, so they we, they stopped living together, um, and unfortunately he moved out and like moved to another, moved back home, which was another city. So we don't see him as often anymore, but we do want to play more when he comes back around again. Um, but it was kind of like a good thing for us to do during COVID. That was kind of really the the long and short of it. We played it during COVID. Hello, Eternal Brownie. You seem a little crazy, but I think I've got you. Um, think I've got you. Double HP, thank you. I should have dice sharded them, really, but then again, I'd rather dice shard this. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with Rosary. Oh, do you know what? No, I'm not. It didn't give us a fire rate upgrade. Blasphemy. I didn't think about that. Um, did I go to my item room on the last? Yeah, I did. I've got Continuum. Um, need to find our rock, remember. I don't have a bomb yet, actually. That's kind of concerning. Um, grab that. Look up, beautiful. Yeah, um, so unfortunately it came to a bit of an abrupt end, but we were kind of making our way through, and we kind of put the, the main task on the back burner. We did quite a lot to sort of make our way towards it. We, like, um, we we went into, like, a lair of these lizard people and found some, some ancient workings that were, uh, maybe... We don't know for sure, but we're, we're, we're maybe something to do with the cause of the anomalies. Uh, and we asked around town, and there was this little hotel with a cat person called Milton. Ooh. Now, this is spicy, because this won't actually give us a tears up. But I'm taking it anyways, because it's more enjoyable. <laughs> like, the other item is very powerful, but I want a new item for my next run. That's that's more my sort of spice. This run's already strong enough. Um, I'm already kind of insta-killing rooms, so why would I need to do that again? Uh, yeah, so we, we we kind of like spent a lot of our time in this little hotel that was run by a cat called Milton, who was just an incredibly written character that we all fucking loved. We'd like <laughs> he'd be like, "Okay, guys, I've prepared this adventure for you. We're gonna go out and slay a wyvern or whatever." And we'd be like, "Nah, we're gonna chill with Milton for a little while. We're just gonna hang." So <laughs> he ended up having to write like he he wrote like one page of dialogue for Milton in on the just in case and I think he ended up by the end writing like six or seven pages of di dialogue for this cat because we all just fucking loved him so much um it was really funny why, why did I get so much time for that room god damn um oh these chests are quite common right now it's kind of crazy I'm just getting lucky I guess um, ooh, another Eternal Champion. I'm starting to recognize the Eternal ones even when the skin's wrong now, because they're, like, they're just a lot larger. Also, those guys are very hard to dodge. That's okay. Um, unfortunately, we're still lacking bombs at the minute, which is a problem, because we very much need bombs to destroy our skull, which we, we have already seen. I will check this in case it's a teleport card. It's not. Hmm. 
Used that in the wrong room there, didn't I? Okay, so it looks like we're going to have a kind of a hard time um, getting a bomb here. Hmm. I guess I just play this machine and hope for the best. Uh, but yeah, there was a lot of lot, a lot of wacky adventures we did. We kind of like after after hanging around that village, we went and met up with a few people, and we got a, we got sort of a tip from like a wise old sage person in in a bar to head over to this other larger city uh, where we could find a little more stuff. Uh, there is a bomb at least I will take, and um, to find a little more information. And we kind of made our way along. We did a few different things along the way. We came, came across like a little... Um, first of all, we came across like a little village that was having some sort of festival. And um, from what we could understand, the festival was like about killing a certain beast. There was like something that had been terrorizing the the the, the village and they'd um, killed it or got rid of it, which happened like... It was like a yearly occurrence. I, I think it might have been a werewolf or something. I can't remember exactly. But um, there was some sort of celebration and we, we partook, and we got some information from the people around there. We actually managed to recruit a little pet. I can't remember what it was now. I think it was like a little shrew mouse or something like that. Do you know the little mice that can like jump really high? I can't remember what they're called in real life now. Um, kangaroo mice or something like that. Um, yeah, uh, and we ended, up, we ended up going through there taking that on then we kind of made our way down we went, ended up at like a little mining town that was definitely my favorite because we, we we did um we did a little quest there i don't know don't really care which one of these i take we did a little quest there in this mining town um the essentially there was the the mine that they were all using as their like main source of income of course it was a mining town so the mines were kind of the main source of the city of the village's income this little mining town was kind of um being it it, it 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 was kind of filled the, the mine at least in the lower depths where like all of the ore was was being filled up with this sort of mist that was making people insane that was like turning people crazy um and no one really knew what was going on so we had to go and go and investigate and find out what was happening um and it turns out there was like a and like a really like crypt old necromancer down there that was doing some dark arts. Uh, he'd been like awoken from his tomb during the mining operations um, and we had to lay him back to rest. And that was actually really good for me because I was an illusionist and um, he was wearing a like a, an illusionist's cloak or something that uh, was very valuable to me and uh, helped me a lot and it also made me look hella stylish. I actually got a little figurine made of my character because I just I really wanted to. Oh yes please. Um yeah, um, I actually got a little um, figurine made of my character just because I was enjoying playing so much. And yeah, so we went into this mine. We had to go and beat this uh, necromancer. And along the way, we'd, we'd sort of had a few trades on a few things. We were still low level. I think we were still in like level six or seven. Um, and we didn't have a ton of money. We only had little bits and bobs that we got from... Um, that we got from various places, but I ended up spending essentially all of my money on uh, an illusion hat, which essentially was like, oh, uh, it, was, it was a hat of disguise, I think. A hat that would let me disguise as any humanoid creature um, and basically have a chance to fool people into thinking I'm someone else, which I thought just generally for talking our way out of uh, problems or getting information would be incredibly useful. It did prove to be useful in, in, under some accounts, but the first thing I did with it, and this is the story that I've told before, was one of the people in our party um, was very... Um, ooh, remove oldest item. Okay, yeah, I'll just do that. Okay. I will take the spin down dice. Thank you. And we can spin this down, unfortunately, into nothing worthwhile. Two tinted rocks here. I don't think I can get them both, but I'll try. I can. Small rock and soul hearts. I was only really looking for the small rock, but there you go. Yeah, we got spin down. That's pretty good. Um, but yeah, um, I was, I was using. I, I had this uh, this hat of disguise, and one of our players was very balls to the wall. He would he would quite often run off on his own. But he, both. Like, him as a person outside of the game and his character in-game were kind of like this, so it's just how he was. And, of course, it got the party into quite a bit of bother from time to time because he wouldn't, like, he wouldn't work with the group. He'd just, like, go off guns blazing. Um, and it, it caused some ruckus. It certainly caused some ruckus from time to time. 
So um, I decided to play a little prank on him that was way more effective than I could ever have hoped. Essentially, this crypt that we'd gone into to fight this necromancer in, the, in this mine, it was essentially like a, a big circle with like a, a bit in the middle that, that the crypt was in. So imagine like a circle with like a hollowed inside that, and the inside is the crypt. So we had to run all the way around. And, and we, we, once we finished, he was like, oh, cool, guys. I'm just going to do a little bit of looting and... Um, I'll, uh... Oh, I hate this room. I, I, he's like, I'm just going to do a little bit of looting. I'm going to go and do a, do a lap around the uh, about around the perimeter and just see if there's anything lying in waits. And so we're like, okay, cool, cool. And he was like, okay, it'll take me about 20 minutes or so. You guys cool waiting here. We're like, yep, that's fine. And so then we hatched a plan to, um, to, to prank him a little bit and get him... Get him a little bit scared. So what what I did is what do we spin down these into? Prayer card. Ooh, is there any way we can get another charge? Epic fetus there. Although do I even want epic fetus with this run? Maybe not. Unfortunately, that's not so good for us. Um, but yeah. Uh, so what what I did is I suggested, hey everyone, there's like four of four others in our group for the people that I'm playing with and I'm like everyone you go you go outside the cave or hide a little bit further down you go do that and they were like cool cool what are you gonna do so I was like okay got a little plan I'm gonna take my hat of disguise and I'm gonna disguise myself as like a decrepit old man like someone that's like hundreds of years old on their deathbed like literally laying down with their dying breath and um, because I have a hat of disguise I can disguise as any humanoid so I could do that um Okay, I was like, where's our cracked key? Then I realized we need to pick it up yet. Um, so I was like, okay, he, uh, our DM said, yep, you can do that. But you're going to have to roll a check to see how successful it is. And I did it, and I rolled a check, and I got like a 19. So it was an incredibly successful attempt. Um, I ended up looking like a decrepit old man on his deathbed. And so when our um, when our friend came back around again, uh, you may be wondering where this is going. When, when he came back, back around again, I, I said, to, he, he was like, what the hell's going on? Where are the others? And I was like, it's been it's been hundreds of years. We've been waiting for you all this time. The necromancer played some foul trick and um, manipulated time to make you think that it's only been 20 minutes, but it's been hundreds of years. The rest are dead. I'm the only one left. And like with my dying breath, I pretended to die. And I, I had to do a check for that too. And I rolled like an 18. So it was like a really convincing attempt. And then... Uh, my friend had to roll checks to see if he believed what was happening. Um, he had to do checks to see if he was, like, falling for it. And he fell for it hook, line, and sinker. On his first attempt to check if I was lying or not, he got a 1. So he completely fell for it. Um, and then on his second attempt a little later on, he got a 3. So he just fell for it hook, line, and sinker. And because, um, like, this was obviously completely optional. I just did this completely for my own enjoyment. It wasn't part of the story. It wasn't planned by the DM. It didn't it enhance the story. It didn't, like, um, further the story or the quest or anything. I just did it for fun. Um, and the DM, because it, because it went so well and the prank was so successful, because obviously those guys jumped out once uh, once I revealed, took the hat off and revealed I wasn't actually dead. Um, because the prank was so successful and he rolled so poorly, the DM decided for the rest of the campaign he should have a uh, minus to his stats because he had PTSD. <laughs> Which was just hilarious. Um, I literally gave him PTSD. <laughs> from thinking all of his friends were dead. <laughs> it was really funny. Uh, I, I found it hilarious. It might sound a little mean, but honestly, it was in good spirit. Um, and as well, like another part of, another funny part of our story was like later down the line, we ended up at a, a city um, that we were kind of meaning to head to. For one, because my family lived there. And for two, there were some scholars there that we needed to um, visit to um, confer with about this research project. Um, with the anomalies and we, we made our way down there and it was a pretty interesting trip there uh, We ended up coming across a mage in like a tower that one of our friends got angry with and quite literally roleplayed shitting on his doorstep um, <laughs> He did not like that we, we got like cursed out by this by this wizard um, But anyways despite that we got to the city and we needed to make some money We were very light on money so we took a job for like one of the royals um, of the city and we had to retrieve a stolen painting um, that had been taken from his house. So we did a lot of investigation. Long story short, we found our way to where this um, 
where this thief was storing the painting. But once we found the painting, we, we realized something a little different. We found out that the painting wasn't actually a painting at all, but it was like a alternate reality within a frame that he used to store his um, stolen wealth. This rich guy had basically made all of his money um, through cheating. Basically like every, corpora every corporation in the real world, they made all of their money through like cheating, scamming and, and lying. And all of his ill-gotten bullion he'd, he was storing in this like pocket realm or like hidden realm that was within this painting. Um, and we actually found found out that the thief was inside the painting, obviously trying to retrieve the loot. And essentially, the world as described to us was kind of like a clay world. It was kind of like a, a world made of clay, and there was a long, huge field. And inside that, uh, at the end of that field, was a big castle with like a banquet and like a, yeah, like a food hall and an armory and all the trappings of like a, a perfect um, medieval castle sort of thing. Um, so we made our way down. We had to fight this clay golem um, at the at the end of the path. That was kind of like the main challenge of this to get past. But once we defeated him, obviously it was a pretty difficult battle because as you can imagine, anything made of clay can regenerate. So I think it was something like we had to kill it on a crit, otherwise it would regenerate its body parts over two turns because they were very easy to hack off, but they were very quick to grow back. So it was a pretty difficult fight. It took us quite a long time, um, but we got through it. And we found we found the person that was trying to steal the steal all the all the guy's stuff, and it turns out the guy like informed us that this was all ill-gotten gains and like the 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 rich dude had no real right to it, um, and so we ended up turning to the side of the thief, um, and within there we found part we, we we were kind of taking some of the stuff that he had um, as as our own form of payment essentially, and one of the things that we ended up let's just grab this there he is. Nice. Um, yeah, one of the... I need to do my challenges at some point as well. I forgot we've got challenges to do. Um, okay, unfortunately, spin down isn't going to do... In fact, spin down is better on this than it is to back grab the key because we could get something really good. Damn it, we didn't. Um, yeah, and so we, we ended up taking something and one of the things that we got, and this is a prop that our DM actually had in real life, was a deck of many things, which I didn't know what was, and a lot of the other people we were playing with also didn't know what it was, because we hadn't played D&D before, or at least hadn't played it much before, so we were a bit confused as to what the hell a deck of many things was, um, and yeah, we ended up um, taking from the deck of many things. Anyone that knows what, uh, what it is already knows how badly this can go. Essentially, a deck of many things is a 52 card deck with each card having different positive or negative effects, most of which are permanent and once you, basically the way that it works is you can draw as many cards or as little cards as you want from the deck but once you've drawn once you can never draw again so i opted to draw just a single card i opted for just one card um not knowing what the deck was that's just like what the rule said on the on the packaging or whatever um so i just like cool i'll take one um and i took a card and it ended up being um, gems, which obviously is positive and it essentially just gave us a fuckload of gems, which we could sell for a lot of money, which is what we desperately needed at the time. So I was like, hi, hey guys, you know this deck of many things? It's pretty awesome. It just gave me a boatload of gems. Why don't one of you take from it too? So then one of my friends was like, cool, I'll take from it too. I'll take just one card also. Bear in mind, when a when a card is taken out of the deck, i.e. the gems card, it is then re-entered back into the deck to make it back to a 52 card deck. And then it's shuffled. So we, we put it back in, shuffled it, and guess what? He also got gems. So we were like, hell yeah, people. This deck is just full of gems and nothing else. Just, it's, it, it, it's only positive. One of you guys needs to take from this thing. It's awesome. Um, so one of our other team members were like, cool, cool, I'll get some loot too. They did it, and they got dumb. They literally got a card that lowered their intelligence by like four points, just made them into a babbling idiot for the rest of the campaign. <laughs> they were like, what? <laughs> it was so funny. Oh god. What a noise. It was so funny. Oh, also, Tiny Planet's awesome on this fight. Yeah, so these guys have 32 boss armor, and the mod put it up to 60. I lowered it back down to, like, 38. So they've got a little bit more boss armor, but not much more. 
So I want them to be a little bit harder because they are pretty easy, but I don't want them to take forever. Because the whole point of boss armor is making it so that my OP builds don't insta-kill things, but at the same time, that my OP builds are still OP. I don't want to get an OP build, because this isn't exactly an OP build. This is a strong build. It's not an OP build. Um, I don't want my OP builds to not feel OP anymore, because that's just boring. You want to be able to feel when you're strong. Okay, we th I think we got this guy here. He's pretty much dead. It's been so long since I fought the beast. The beast, however... I think normally has 60 armor and now he has 100, so the beast will take a bit longer. But then again, that's good because the beast is so fast. The beast fight is like crazy quick. Okay, I don't know what the parameters for my little electric lightning dude firing is. But yeah, so this deck of many things, it just kind of like... We were so... Because we were like our characters and us personally had no idea what it was. We were so convinced that we could just like open it up and get good shit. We're like, oh cool, it's just free stuff. No, no, no. It is not so simple. Uh, we unfortunately <laughs> ended up making one of our party members, my girlfriend, she ended up just becoming dumb. <laughs> when both of us got gems. So we ended up being quite, I won't say quite rich, but we ended up being like quite well off after that. I think we, we collectively had about 2,000 gold or something like that prior to getting the gems and each lot of gems sold for like 5,000 each. So we had a lot more gold than we did prior, which was pretty awesome to have. Oh, Jacob's Ladder. You beaut. You beaut. Yeah. Just be careful with this fella. His bombs... I just, One thing that always used to catch me out with this fight is that his bombs do contact damage. But honestly, Mum's contact has been an MVP of this run, I will say. An absolute MVP. Ow, I stood in the worst place possible there. I think we've got enough health to get through this, though. I don't think we're going to have a, much of a problem. There you go. He's dead. I always, on the war fight, it always makes me think back to my uh, my tainted lost victory on this. Because I got really close to dying because war exploded and hit me. By the way, these guys can also be... Um, be eternal champions. So we do got to be aware of that. I think we should, yeah, we we'll just about kill the sites. I, I do want to aim at them instead, though, because that was a little close. I still want to dodge them and not just be stupid. We've already got his, him half down. I think Mum's contact just slowing down his phases is really helping us. We might even be able to get him before this phase ends. This one might end up hitting me, though. I'm stood in a pretty precarious spot here. Uh, yeah, we're probably going to get hit here. But, no, we're not. We got him. Okay. Now it's onto the beast. Like I said, the beast will take a bit longer than normal. Because I think I think I, I changed the armor from 100, what the mod had, to like 75. So it has got a bit more armor. I can't remember exactly now what the values were. I love this tiny planet ring. I wish we had that piercing, though. Wow. Okay, it doesn't matter. Look at how much damage I just did in one, in one go there. That was crazy. The one thing that is unfortunate with tiny planet on this phase is the shots tend to get kind of caught up and hit against um, hit against the, the stalagmites here. Also, using bombs against him is very good because bombs break through boss armor. I'll try using them when I can. Unfortunately, I didn't have many. So use this as an opportunity to create as many tiers as possible surrounding us because they're, they're going to get sucked towards him eventually. I don't have to really play around too much. As you can see, he's a uh, gobbling them up. But yeah, normally by this point with, with this much damage oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. With this much damage, I'd probably be like under halfway HP on him now. But now we're not quite. And it just means we have to see a little more of the attacks because normally, like there's a few faces of this guy that you don't even get to see. I do wish he had a few more attack patterns though, this guy. There he goes, into his final phase now. This shouldn't be too bad at all. I really do love this bit, though, of the fight, where it's just like, you can see him becoming slowly, slowly more and more beat the hell up. Like, his eyes shutting and, like, he's getting bloody and his horns are stumped and all that sort of stuff. It's really good. But yeah, I hope you guys are a bit more of a fan of this level of boss armor. 
I think it works a little bit better. And we got Prosperity unlocked. Nice. Beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. A very fun episode. And I'll see you guys in the next one.